to use the word trend, that might not even be a strong enough word. It's almost a dramatic shift that we're seeing. We don't know why people get this cancer. We don't know why uh, this cancer is particularly prevalent today as opposed to 40 years ago, uh, but it does appear to be increasing dramatically. Doctors Eric Jenden and Marshall Posner are talking about head and neck cancer. Specifically, they're referring to an alarming number of cases in a different kind of patient. The patient population has changed dramatically. Um, it's a younger population. Uh, a great majority of these patients have never smoked. Uh, many of them drink lightly or socially. In fact, the experts at Mount Sinai explain the cases in question are not linked to environmental factors at all. Instead, the common link is the human papillomavirus, or HPV, a sexually transmitted infection affecting more than 20 million Americans. What we've recently identified is uh, human papillomavirus as a cause of about 25% of head and neck cancer in the United States. Now when you sit down with a patient and you say, listen, I've got some bad news, you have a cancer of the tonsil or the base of tongue, and then I tell them this is a virus, and then I tell them it's the same virus that causes cervical cancer in women, it raises up all kinds of questions. Specifically, it raises questions about screening, and that's where Dr. Jonathan Naviv and his colleagues at ENT and Allergy Associates come in. If one has had more than five oral sex partners, the chance of head and neck cancer, this is without smoking and drinking, is 200 times that of an individual who doesn't have that risk factor. So that is a, a startling number. Now, Mount Sinai and DNT and Allergy Associates are working together to identify which patients are at high risk for HPV-related cancer. The good news is the survivability from HPV-related head and neck cancers appears to be much greater than that of smoking, drinking related head and neck cancers. Just look at throat cancer patient, Phil Keen. It's not a death sentence, you know, it's, it's not the end. In the spring of 2010, the 52-year-old husband and father of three was shaving when he found a lump on the side of his neck. After several tests, he was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer. I never felt healthier in my life. I was, <clears throat> I was running probably uh, five miles a week. I played basketball two days a week, and uh, I was playing baseball. The cause for his diagnosis came as a second shock. When I heard that it was possibly the HPV virus, I was like, I don't get it. Instead of a traditional 12 to 15 hour surgery, Dr. Jenden completely removed Phil's tumor using a minimally invasive robotic technique available at only a handful of medical centers around the world. Four days later, Phil was home. He then received radiation treatments through the fall. It just seemed like they were, they had their finger on the pulse of what was going on. And that just, it was exciting to me. I, I, as horrible as it was that I was what they were talking about, I felt good to be part of that kind of energy. I just knew I was in the right place. It would have been very, very different even four years ago. And so now you take a young guy who's got the next 40 or 50 years of his life to enjoy life and enjoy the quality of life. And it's all really a result of kind of bringing good people together and testing new hypotheses to, again, set that standard of care. To that end, there is more work to be done. What do we do when you've got a wife or a girlfriend who's got known HPV or cervical cancer? How do you screen her male partner, uh, her husband? And what do you do for the kids? Um, is, is there anything even necessary there? And so the short answer is we don't know. And that's where the research is so important. To really learn how to treat patients in a way that benefits them most, not just survival, but also quality of life survival. And that's where we're going. We're going to try and really bring modern medicine, modern mo combined modality care to patients with head and neck cancer at Mount Sinai. While the experts work to answer the unknown, patients should remember they have a valuable resource to help with their own questions. If you're with someone that is HPV positive, it's very reasonable to see your ear, nose, and throat doctor, even if you have no symptoms. If there is something, there's many things we can do to move things along, but the key thing is early detection. Don't be afraid of this, embrace this. I'm very optimistic about it all, and uh... I feel really good, and I think that uh, it's going to be good news for me, and that's what I'm, uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. 
To learn more about the work being done to fight HPV-related throat cancer and for information about screening, visit mountsinai.org.